Maybe. Not showing up. All right, let's just make sure. I'm speaking at the laptop. I'm speaking at the podium. Speaking at the laptop. Speaking at the podium. Good. Okay.
All right, folks, we're gonna get the show rolling here. We don't have a microphone, unfortunately. Um, students, hopefully you'll have them when you present, but I'm gonna try to project a little bit so everyone can hear me. Thank you everyone for being here today to join for this very special celebration with all of our students. My name is Jesse Poplinski. I'm one of the partners at Hack Upstate. It's an honor to celebrate our graduation of our fourth cohort of careers in code here at Lemoyne today. Um, our students have, our students are going to tell you in a little while, but they have gone through some tremendous challenges over these 24 weeks. And it's been awesome to watch them all transform into software developers and really gain these new skills and new profound sense of confidence to navigate their new software development careers. And we're very proud of them and how far they've come. We started Hack Upstate in 2013 with the underlying mission to advance Central and Upstate New York tech communities. And since 2013, we've organized 15 total hackathons and had the privilege of organizing now our fourth cohort of Careers in Code. And so here we are some 10 years later, and we're so fortunate to have the opportunity to continue uh, to organize Careers in Code and provide technical training to combat poverty in Central New York in an effort to increase our students' earning potential. Operating a coding bootcamp cannot be done alone. First off, we're so fortunate to have amazing partners like Onondaga County and the Alliance for Economic Inclusion, Syracuse Surge, Lemoyne's Erie 21 Initiative, and Center State CEO to make this cohort possible. In addition, many of our local employers that have helped to inform our curriculum and what should we be teaching our students to position them for success. Um, secondly, the support from our instructors and teaching assistants. Um, they're really instrumental in giving our students the support and teaching them what they need to be successful. And all of them have dedicated so many hours to our students to get them over the finish line and, and be here today. And third, of course, our students. You guys have all persevered over these 24 weeks and uh, you really all proved you have what it takes to, to be here today. Let's give a big round of applause for all of those folks. Just a couple of quick logistical things. So we are broadcasting live on YouTube. Um, and after this is all said and done, it'll be available to view afterwards on our YouTube channel. Uh, that's at Hack Upstate. I think we all know why we're here today, um, but with Careers & Co, we're really set out to solve two problems in particular. Um, the first problem is our poverty rate here in Syracuse. So uh, the poverty rate in Syracuse remains among the highest in the United States. And as a consequence of this, there are oftentimes few opportunities for individuals from impoverished communities to advance themselves professionally. So with Careers & Co, we're really trying to increase the educational act, opportunity access to individuals that may or may not have those opportunities today. The second big problem we're working to address is, is the talent shortage issue. There's a lot of employers in Central and Upstate New York who are really struggling to find qualified software developers. And so what happens as a consequence of this is folks have to often look outside of New York State. So we really see that as opportunities and dollars that are leaving our region. With Careers & Co, we're trying to increase that talent pool and hopefully put our employers in a position where they can hire locally. Um, so with Careers & Code, ultimately, we provide our students with software engineering training, and an effort to give them the skills they need to identify entry-level software developer internships and uh, entry-level positions after 24 weeks of instruction. Uh, quick code of conduct, uh, please review if you haven't had an opportunity. In short, be cool, do the right thing, be kind, think before you speak, don't do anything instructive or uh, inflammatory. And if you ever have an issue or uncomfortable or feel unsafe, please flag one of us down um, or send us an email at team at hackupstate.com. That's our hashtag for tonight. Um, Caitlin is going to be trying to monitor our social media channels. So anything cool you see happening tonight, uh, shoot us the hashtag and then we'll get your retweet. Uh, run up for schedule here. Um, so after we all wrap up with intros and thank yous and all the good stuff, we'll have our capstone presentations. And then immediately after that, whenever we get done, hopefully by 7, 7.15, we'll have our uh, graduation ceremony immediately after. Got to give a big thank you to all of our team for all their hard work and making this cohort possible. Uh, Doug Crescenzi, founding partner of, partner of Hack Upstate, Max Matthews, our fearless Dean of Students, lead instructor, Jason Scarf, our student success representative, Laura Thorne, our amazing career coach, there you are, Laura, uh, and then Max Gerlach, Karen Thorne, and Caitlin Warboy, our incredible program managers. Uh, let's give them a ball, a big round of applause. Thank you, guys. Also, I got to thank our instructors and teaching assistants. Um, like I said, we have an incredibly amazing group of folks here that are really dedicated to our students' growth and their learning and their success. They've done so much putting in the time with our students, uh, both inside and outside the classroom, setting up one-on-one -on -one times with them and really giving them the support they need, again, to, to cross the finish line here today. 
And we really can't express how grateful we are for, for all that time. It really is invaluable in making this program a success. Um, I'd also like to note, um, I said this during the kickoff too, but all of our teaching assistants you see up there are graduates from our first, second, and third cohorts. Um, I think that's pretty amazing. So it's a big shout out to our TA. Uh, thank you. I'm going to thank our guest speakers for coming into the classroom and sharing our wisdom with our students. Uh, Glenn and Jason, you guys are both here today. So thank you guys for, for coming in and sharing your wisdom with our students. I also got to thank our mock interviewers. Laura did an awesome job facilitating mock interviews for the program um, and giving our students a real opportunity um, to have some practice. I'm um, getting some real experience and some feedback. Um, so huge thank you to all of our mock interviewers for taking the time out of their busy days uh, to help interview our students. Give a round of applause. All right, we also have to thank our partners for the support of the program. Uh, gotta give a huge, huge thank you again to Onondaga County, the Alliance for Economic Inclusion, Syracuse Surge, Center State CEO, Lemoyne's 21's Erie 21, Common Space, and the Working Solutions for all their tremendous support. Uh, we have to thank the following folks. Onondaga County and Alliance for Economic Inclusion, I have to thank County Executive Brian McMahon, Whitney Shepard, and all those on the board of the Alliance for Economic Inclusion for not only giving us the opportunity to organize one court, but three additional courts of careers and code. At Syracuse Surge, got to thank the City of Syracuse, Mayor Ben Walsh, at Lemoyne, got to thank Bill Brower, Steve Kulik, Linda Lamura, Amanda Miles, Taylor Hodge, Nicole Adams, Janine Baker, Erica Weber, and Dave Voorhees. At Center State, got to give a thank you to Dominic Robinson, Liza Semiday, Amy Durfee, Kanan Webb, and Jessica Barbado. A common space, the folks that have been wonderful in providing cohorts memberships to our students. Great space to work and get involved in the, the local tech community. Big thank you to Joe Cisco and Shana Delberto. At Working Solutions, who we partner with to provide laptops for our students after graduation so they can continue their software development journeys. I have to thank you to Alan Lamb. Um, big, big thank you to our partners. Without them, we would not be able to organize these cores. So let's give a big round of applause for all of our partners. And last but not least, our students. So you'll hear from them in a minute, the journeys that they all went through, uh, but they've persevered through a lot, um, all the way starting at our rigorous admissions process. But they've, they've proven to have the passion aptitude and the grit and they've really persevered through some adversity and dedicated so many hours both inside and outside the classroom and it's all a reflection in this capstone project that you'll see shortly so we're so proud and thrilled for all of you soon to be graduates um, so thank you students for all of your your hard work and dedication to the program all right and now, up now i'll call up max to uh get our capstone projects rolling Let's get up for Max. Hey guys, sorry, we are uh, down a mic. So when you come up to present as students, make sure you guys are projecting just so everyone can hear you not only in the room, but also on the YouTube live stream as well. Uh, we have some friends and family joining there. Uh, so my, my name is Max Matthews. Uh, I am proud to be uh, graduating cohort four right now. Um, I've been with the program since the beginning, and what's really been amazing is the wide opportunity of jobs that our students are able to come out of this program uh, and, and are qualified to do. So uh, the job title that we train is for a full stack web developer. That's for someone who can now make a web app. So think about Facebook or Instagram. Believe it or not, our graduates are now trained in or, uh, enough in order to do that role. But we find all kinds of tech adjacent jobs um, that our students go into. So uh, part of them, uh, part of those titles are listed on this uh, screen and it's all through the skills that they learned through this program. We're not talking about those hard skills or the languages necessarily that they've learned, um, but that problem solving, the communication, the determination, uh, the knowing just what to Google, right, makes them uh, able to go through and get almost any job on this list. So we're super proud of our graduates. Um, the capstone project is what you guys are going to be seeing tonight. Uh, the students have been working on these projects for the past six months, for the past 24 weeks, they've been grinding away at a project that they get to choose, which is really empowering, right? They're taking all of this knowledge and funneling it into something that they are passionate about, a problem that they're trying to solve. 
Um, and so uh, our students are going to come up right before the graduation ceremony. Uh, we keep them to a strict six minutes. We will not be afraid to slow clap them off the stage. Um, but it uh, is a great opportunity for them to show everything that they have learned uh, in the past half of the year. Um, so to give you a little background on this, um, students learn how to build a front end and a back end. And you, you guys may have been uh, hearing me for the past six months as friends and family, as, uh, as the students have been tuning in. So now you get to get a little lesson from me. You get a little taste of what they have been learning uh, just to give you context for their presentation. So the front end, that's what you guys interact with. That's a website, right? That's the app on your phone. You also have the back end, that's the server. What you guys may know the back end as, as is the cloud, right? You hear about all of these apps in the cloud or you hear about iCloud. Um, our students are learning how to develop and deploy into a cloud like that. And so what happens is our students have learned this framework called React. It's a way to integrate data right into the web interface and make it more easily interactable. Um, they also learn on the server side something called Node.js. It's written in JavaScript. It's a way uh, to interface with the front end and be able to connect multiple users throughout across the entire internet together. They also learn a framework called Express, which makes it a little bit easier to send and receive data inside of Node. And they learn uh, the database as well. They learn uh, SQL or SQL. SQL is uh, the leading relational database language that allows all of this data to interface and get saved together. So what you're gonna see tonight may just look like a website. It may look really simple. But what all of these students have managed to do, which is a requirement for graduation for the capstone, is they connect what we call a route or a component on or a, a page. That's what you're seeing in the front end. What's happening behind the scene is they have an API, an application programming interface that connects into that route. That's what's allowing the data to show up on the page. You also have this uh, framework called SQLize, which helps bridge the gap between the backend server and the database itself. So data flows through that table um, that's back in the database and interfaces uh, directly to that API to make all of this data flowing together. Um, and then, of course, students may have additional pages that they're showing up. Uh, showing off tonight. So while it may look like a simple page that uh, is being demoed, really what's happening is at least 100 lines of code are being run in order to make that happen. And a single letter wrong in any of those lines of code can cause the whole thing to break. Uh, you may have seen uh, people about ready to smash their laptops uh, before they schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me and we help get them back on the right track. But um, students have learned the hard way how to debug, right? Because they are hands-on, they are building something real, um, and that's what you're about to see through uh, all of the presentations tonight. Any questions about any of that? Anyone curious? Applications are still open until midnight tonight in case anyone wants to join in. Second round. <laughs> all right so with all of that said we are going to switch over to our cap zones uh first on deck we have schneider uh and coming up we have jordan so schneider come on up uh join me on zoom and get your screen share going And a reminder for all of the students, um, join in on the Zoom link for the cohort four classroom link that we've been using. Just make sure that you stay muted and your video off, but that will help us just get your screen share going.
We don't know now. Recording in progress. Okay, so you're all set there. So just go to your screen share desktop one. Uh, no, I have to stop the show on my side. Um, so, what is that? Yeah. 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 Um, but that's in this actually in this case. There. Hi everyone, my name is Schneider Jokim and I'm a recent graduate or soon to be working. Oh, okay. Hi everyone, my name is Schneider Jokim and I'm soon to be graduate of the Crazy and Code cohort. And I'm super excited to be sharing my capstone today with you all. So before careers in code, I was always interested in web development and technology in general. So I took the self-learning route, but if I found it hard because there were a lot of resources out there and careers in code was an opportunity that came by that offered a curriculum, a set curriculum to follow. So I was enticed and I signed up to join. Outside of careers in code, I like photography and longboarding around Syracuse whenever the weather allows me to. If you want to contact me, there are my links. Hit me up. So why EV now? Well, electric vehicles have been on the rise and many people have them now. And personally, as someone who's been interested in them as well, I've had questions and I'm sure, you know, many folks have similar questions. So I decided to create this product in order to answer some of these questions. EV now is a website that will help users find information about electric vehicles, as I'll demonstrate in a bit. So the development process for this project of mine was fun. Um, I took what I learned about the software development lifecycle and um, the minimum viable product and created and used as a foundation to create my project. And on the side, here are some pictures of my wireframes and mockups, my creative process. So I went through a few challenges in creating this capstone. Time management was a big one. It, it felt like I never had enough time to do what I needed to do or wanted to do. I had I came to realize I didn't need to reinvent the wheel, you know, just look at what exists and take inspiration from that. And one of the biggest problems was when I completely nuked my project. That was scary. It was really scary. So naturally, there are a ton of features I want to implement in this project, but I'll take it a step at a time and roll them out when it's ready. <clears throat> I'm super proud of the work I've done and um, the lessons I've learned throughout everything. As I'm graduating, I see this, oh my gosh, at the beginning of an end, you know, um, careers and code provide me with the foundation I needed and I will build upon that and become better. Here are my thanks to the wonderful people who helped me, not just in the technical aspect, but in the life aspect, who provide me with advice, guidance, and checked up on me just for my general well-being. I made it up there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, here's my project, EV Now, and I'm excited to demonstrate it with you all. I, in designing it, I really wanted to go for a modern look, you know, a modern look you would see in, uh, if you were to visit a website today. So if you're an uh, end an user, just curious about terminology, you would, you know, go on this page, and here are some terms that would help you um, answer some of the <laughs> questions. The page that took the most work. And what I'm most excited about is my shop EVs page. With Max's help, I was able to put this together because man, was I stressing. So the concept here is you are the end user, you pick a make and then Tesla, for example, and then a model. And then the information for that vehicle will populate here, the price, the range and the drivetrain. So what's happening here is this information is stored in a database. And when you select, you know, make or model, it's an API call that helps populate this information for you to see. Another page I really like is my news page. It's functional in the sense that 
You can click a link and it opens up. There you go. It opens up um, a tab to a link uh, to a news page where you uh, can, you know, get updated with the news in the EV space. Well, yeah, that's, that's my capstone, my project. I'll have a recorded, got to put her on back. Okay. Uh, yeah, the best way to uh, pop over to the screen. Do uh, share screen. That's not one. Yeah. And just hit the slideshow there, and you're good to go. Great. We do forget to check. Can you see? Oh, you can't see the Zoom stuff. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jordan Murray, and this is my capstone. So, six months ago, I didn't know anything. I hadn't <laughs> used a computer since like high school. Um, I'm not big on social media. I actually have no social media. I don't even like the internet. Um, that's not true. I mean, it, it's cool, but it's just I don't really spend my time on computers. Um, so, before I worked as, uh, or before I took CIC, I worked in sales internationally. And I currently work at tcgplayer.com, where um, many of you might have seen the national news where we just unionized. Um, I chose to apply for this course because I want to make more money. I never wanted to, I never woke up as a kid saying, you know what, I can't wait to fill card orders for Pokemon when I have a criminal justice degree. And um, people call me a Pokemon master at the age of 33. It's not, it doesn't make me happy. Um, so if I'm going to be miserable, I might as well be making more money. Um, outside of the boot camp, I like to travel with my boyfriend, Patrick, and also uh, I play video games, I watch retro anime, and, um, you know, just the general things that people do. Um, so here's the problems I was trying to solve. Um, I didn't have a hub where my friends and I could have watch parties or view the same media, and we always have different schedules, so it's rather hard to meet up. Um, not only that, but Discord doesn't allow you to stream some things sometimes, and it ends up booting you off. Um, I've used sites like this before, but I've never actually like made a website. Like I said, I don't use computers. Um, I chose my project because I just wanted a space for us to be able to, you know, do our thing. Um, but it doesn't really affect my life in terms of anything major. It's just more of like a social thing. Um, so the solution I came up with was uh, they, my friends asked me what type of stuff I could put on there. And I started sort of picked and pulled the things that I wanted to. Um, and that's how I came up with the idea for the website to begin with. Uh, the course helped me to turn what I saw in my head, like when I originally had the idea, into something that I could put into a product that I could view. Um, what makes it different is that it's mine. Um, it's not something that I'm like, you know, I have a feature that I dislike or anything like that. The creative process was rather easy. I just had to stick with small implementations of design. So I did my wireframe at first, and then after that, piece by piece, I worked on it. Um, I managed myself by doing a small amount of work every week because I was helping to unionize at the time. Um, the challenges I faced is that I was being pulled in lots of different directions. I've had like four deaths in the family. Um, I've been one of the main people who helps to unionize a TCG player, and I've also been doing this and trying to find time to get to physical therapy after an uh, accident that I was in. Um, my comment section was not built in a day. It actually, I, it took more time than I would care to admit, but it took me like two weeks. I hated it. Um, <laughs> it broke when I forgot to save it. And, um, I ended up having to redo it all again, which made me have to relearn everything like for a third time. And I was like, okay, now I got it. Um, I was extremely frustrated with imposter syndrome because I thought I was just doing it wrong the entire time. Um, I learned uh that through this process my oh shit moment comes like way later on um sometimes I'm like yeah i get it and i can remember everything and then i'm like oh shit and then i'll really get it um how i fixed that was by just keeping at it like keeping as much time and attention as i could invested into it uh what's next is i'm going to become the lawnmower man i'm going to write a, pro a program i'm going to jump inside a computer and it's over no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I want to learn more about cybersecurity 
And I plan on adding more to my website, like a login and a profile, which will be the first steps of authentication, which I'm really interested in. Um, I was really surprised that I actually even succeeded in this course, because like I said, for like 15 years, I haven't touched a computer. I like don't even use my phone. I hate smartphones. Technology stinks. But <laughs> without further ado, here is my um, project, if I can get it for you. All right, so this is it right here. Um, it doesn't look like much until you click on something and then you got like GI Joe. Um, nobody watches that anymore except for me and my friends. Um, so pretty much all like 5 million views are us. Um, then I also, I put in the ability to switch to a different channel. Um, and I plan on having a lot more later on so I could watch everything. Would be a commercial break as soon as I click on it. Um, down here, eventually the schedule will link up with whatever channel you click. Um, it's just that I don't have two things that are always on. Sometimes they will end the stream and then I'll have to start over. But uh, over here, I can't see it, but you can. I have a comment section. So my first comment on my website is going to be the first comment everyone should do. And it's not posting. <laughs> um, it works, I swear. I don't know why it's not right now. Max, any idea? Huh? Probably missing capital F somewhere. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I have a comment section typically. Um, and when you comment into it, your comment stays there and it turns neon green. It's dope. Um, but not right now, evidently. Uh, in the future, I plan on, first of all, fixing this immediately because I was literally just working last night. Um, tell them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I also, uh, like I said, plan on adding authentication and a profile so that you can like favorite things and add certain things that you want to. But uh, thank you for being here tonight, everyone. It was a pretty hard journey. Just glad that I got through it. And I'm glad you guys got through it too. And you guys all did great. So have a good night. Good question. Yeah, I have any questions before I go? Sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> no? Thank you. Next, <laughs> we have Jennifer and Brandon on deck. Well, we're about to find out. Your screen share started. Sorry. Testing. There we go. Now we can talk. All right. Hello, everybody. I'm Jen Harris, and that's who I am. What I'm doing is graduating. That's right. So here's my contact information. And I want you to get a hold of me at any point so you can learn about my coding journey, my LinkedIn, and my Medium blog. But there's a few cool stories on there. And I wanted to really point out, really new to coding. I knew nothing about it before I began. And it was really stressful. But while I wasn't fretting over my code, I was spending as much time as I could with my dogs, taking lots of nature photography, and writing. What's next? I'll be completing courses for additional coding languages. I've got some sites to build for myself and for some other friends to expand my portfolio. I'm exploring other educational opportunities as well through Theory 21 for cybersecurity or the computer science program. I have come a long way and I wanna show some examples of my process. So at the very beginning, this was my website. This was a website and it didn't work. It didn't function. You couldn't interact with it, but I was pretty proud of that. It was very simple. I had to learn how, we all had to learn how to use the terminal. And I always felt really cool when we did. It's like, I can use the terminal. And then this is a mock-up of a website we were working on. So it was simple, but I don't know if you can see, that's over 160 lines of code, easily. When I get errors, I ask myself, what am I doing? 
What's the meaning of my existence? Why doesn't my code work? Oh, I was just missing a semicolon. <laughs> Darn syntax. So I faced a lot of challenges along the way. Time management took a lot. So I was working full time and then rushing home to make myself dinner and go to class for three and a half hours. But I want to correct myself. My wife made me dinner. Thank you for keeping me alive. Uh, JavaScript took a lot of work. I have Max and the TAs to thank for that. And I would not be graduating right now if it weren't for their help. There was a lot to learn. There was at least 16 different skills or programs that we had to take care of. And these are just the ones I can remember right now. My head was spinning the whole time. But it led me to my capstone for Family Finder. And I wanted to solve the problem of how to assist through the rehoming of animals when pet parents faced health challenges or financial problems and couldn't keep their pets. It broke my heart because my family and I faced this ourselves. My parents had to go into nursing homes and their sweet dog Noah had to find a new place to live. I could not leave him at a shelter. I didn't want him confused, sad, or scared. And thankfully, some family friends adopted him and I was very relieved and grateful. So this is one part of the process as well called a wireframe where I got to plan out each different page and what I wanted on them, a real rough draft. But now I can show you the real thing. So this is Family Finder and I'm really proud of the homepage. We all look at homepages and think, oh, I know, that's really simple, it's a homepage. Oh, it took a lot of work to get the navigation working and to get the photos up here and to click a button and to have it work. So I was really proud of that. I don't have anything in here for available for adoption or animal information yet. That would be coming from my database with an API call that I would request. So I could go to the database and get that on here. There, there were some options on here. We, we had our dogs up there, Max and I, and they're gone. I don't know why <laughs> or how, but they're gone. So I have to work on that. The application and my other favorite page is the donation page because you can help to turn this sad dog into this happy dog. And my links work. Well, at least this one does, I found out last night. <laughs> so that is Family Finder. Thank you so much. I can't wait for you to see everybody else's because they're awesome. And thanks for your support. Okay, thank you. Up next, we have Brandon and on that uh, exam. Yep. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, my name is Brandon Furs. Um, a soon to be graduate of the uh, cohort here. Glad to see you all here today. Um, I'm going to talk to you about my project that I made uh, called Plantabox. Um, but first, a little bit about me here. Uh, there's my contact information. Um, and no, that's not my cat. I just thought it looked pretty professional. <laughs> um, outside of the boot camp, I like to, um, you know, look, uh, look into art, drawing, writing, studying foreign languages, traveling with friends when I can, playing video games, and discovering new music. All right. So uh, before careers in code, I uh, had initially gone to school for teaching English as a second language, uh, but a little, a few years actually into uh, my program there, uh, I found out that teaching really wasn't the best fit for me. Um, and then ever since then, I had trouble trying to find a um, 
like a career path or environment that felt right for me. Um, so that was a big struggle. Uh, but about a year or two ago, um, one of my uh, colleagues from high school, uh, Ms. Tania Dean there, uh, she told me about, um, about the cohort, Careers and Code. And at first I thought, mm, no, I, I don't really think so. I got really bad cold feet and let the opportunity pass. But this time around, um, after uh, recently at the time uh, being laid off from my job, I thought, you know, this is pretty much a sign. So let's just go, I go right in. <laughs> Uh, so the goal of my capstone is to uh, essentially curtail, uh, help try to curtail the problem that we see with inflation, especially with food. Um, that's a really important uh, aspect to me because, you know, every living thing needs food. And to have to pay, you know, wild prices just for a simple uh, bunch of strawberries or a bag of potatoes, it's it's ridiculous in my opinion. So I was trying to explore a way to kind of offset that by means of gardening at home, especially indoor gardening. Um, that way uh, people can you know, build self-sufficiency as well as increasing environmental awareness about you know, how much actually goes into the process of uh, cultivating uh, food and goods at home. Um, let's see here. And yeah, this, pro this problem needs to be addressed because, you know, access to fresh food is a nationwide issue in so many parts or places across the country that um, I think with some luck, this project could kind of help curtail that in some way. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so initially my plan was just to build a uh, tracker for um, watering indoor plants but it didn't feel like enough to me. And it just so happened that uh, at the time, uh, my mom, uh, she was starting up uh, her own indoor gardening uh, setup. Um, so I just took a lot of inspiration from that and seeing how um, you know passionate and driven she was about it. I was just like, hey, like this is something cool that a lot of people you know would be able to benefit from. So you know why not make a kind of place or service where people can go to learn more and build. <laughs> uh, let's see here. All right, so my creative process initially was very chaotic. Um, I would consistently change my ideas around, think like, oh, maybe I should just have a, a whole new idea and I could never settle on a specific uh, topic to, uh, center my, my capstone project around. And it was really frustrating and caused a lot of doubt. Uh, but over time, I found personally that simply uh, just writing down um, my thought process helped me condense things uh, further from there. Uh, main challenges that I ran into were, um, again, focusing too much on what the finished product would be and not um, you know, the minimum viable product. Uh, that we would be showing, showing here. Um, and yeah, that led me to burning myself out a lot because of being focused on the end end goal. Um, and a portion of my uh, website that I had a lot of trouble with was my database that retrieves information about uh, plants. Um, I had such a hard time building the database and getting the API to communicate, and I'm gratefully thankful for my instructors for uh, helping me out in that regard. Uh, so next up, I definitely want to um, continue with my pro continue with building on my project here, as well as learning more about uh, JavaScript and CSS, um, especially because. Uh, it's just so interesting to see the lengths that, and uh, yeah, the lengths that you can go to with uh, even the little knowledge that we were able to get from from these six months. Um, and in the end, I just want to say that the the skills that I've learned from this boot camp have shown me that you know even though I do have that long way to go, still I can break it down whatever challenge into smaller bits and then um, get to my goal in time. All right, so let me show you my website. Oops. That one. Okay. 
So this is the homepage for uh, my uh, website here. Um, there's just going to be like information about what the main idea of the site is, as well as um, um, examples of crops that you can grow at home, as well as information about future developments. I have a uh, journal section that's kind of like a mini blog where users can um, detail information about the progress of the different projects or plants that they have growing. In the future, I want to add a um, user, user photo upload feature so that you can visually see the progress over time. And this is my um, planter section where, for example, if I wanted to learn more about sweet potatoes or something like that, uh, I would select it from the drop down menu here. An image will appear as well as some information about the crop in particular. Um, and I have a little variety of uh, images there. But this process has been really uh, rewarding in the end because it, I, of all the sleepless nights, just fretting about what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? And then one day it finally clicked. And all I can say is that I'm. I'm very grateful and very thankful. And uh, thank you all for coming today. Is the drop down uh, where you research the different plants, is that pulling the information, the photos, and the copy from the database? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, to answer your question, Jennifer, uh, yes, I, I definitely want to uh, start up gardening from this, um, especially because that firsthand experience as well will uh, give me the opportunity to be like, oh, um, I feel like it will be easier if I could um, do it, do something this way and have that firsthand experience to be able to make implementations from there. All right. Thank you. Up next, we have Exona with Kalai on deck. All right. All right. Um, hello, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Exona Imeri. Um, I just actually wanted to take a few seconds to say thank you to all the instructors, the TAs, and everyone who made this uh, cohort possible for all of us. We appreciate you and thank you for the rest to the rest of you for being here today. Um, so a little bit about me. Uh, I am a first generation Albanian American. I graduated from Rochester Institute of Technology with a bachelor's degree in criminal justice that I obviously don't use. <laughs> um, so um, a few things about me. I, I am also a former educator for the Syracuse City School District. I've worked as a server for over 10 years, and now I'm working for um, the city of Syracuse as a systems training assistant. Um, so um, the reason why I chose to apply for the boot camp is because during the summer of 2022, I was injured and I was bedridden for about two months. Um, and during that time, I actually lost both my jobs that I was working as an educator and as a server. Um, and I just wanted to take the time to really build a career instead of just uh, jumping from job to job. I wanted something secure and I figured why not? This is a great opportunity. I can build new skill sets and do something that I've never done before. Um, if you'd like to contact me, you can find my links right here. You can um, add me on LinkedIn, go view my, uh, my GitHub and my website as well. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, so, Per our capstone standards, we had a problem that we um, passionately wanted to find a solution for. And my, the problem that I wanted to find a solution for was recent college graduate students who take a standardized test, who kind of had a, have an idea of what they want to do, but don't know what school they want to uh, choose or what school they would be a great match for. This is, um, this is why I invested it because I was actually one of those students. I wanted to become a law, uh, law a lawyer. Uh, I wanted, I took the LSAT, but I didn't know what schools would be a great match for me. And plus I was super broke. So I didn't have $150 to apply for every single school. And I know I would have probably needed to apply at least for five, so five schools. Um, so the solution that I, again, 
<laughs> so the solution that I created using code was based off of the criteria that the students can choose from from my website. Um, the system, the website, will generate the top three best match schools for that of those criteria. Um, so this is my creative process, as you can see here. I have these are all the pages that I've created using Figma. I wanted to give a real layout of how I want my website to 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 look like. Um, I wanted the website to include a home, a home, a home page, sign in page, create account page, filter page, and the results. These are the apps that I used. VS Code was amazing. Figma was one of them. Trello kept me on track on what I needed to do. So the challenges that I faced was pretty much creating a web app from the uh, from the user experience, and I wanted uh, that. That's all I kept in mind was how would the user interact with my website. Um, I broke every single page that I created and I went back and debugged it in many, many times. Um, time management was one of those issues as well because I do work full time and being in this course took a lot mentally, like a lot. Um, so one of the biggest challenges that, create, uh, that, that I faced was creating an algorithm and realizing how difficult it is to create an algorithm when you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> but I built one. Um, so what's next for me? I'm going to continue taking courses, uh, applying to jobs in this field, and also continue working on my capstone and making my mom a page of her own. So without further ado, I will take you through my website. So my <clears throat> website is called After Grad Prep. As you can see here, uh, students can enter a score based off of their standardized test that they choose from. Um, they can also sign in right over here, but I'm going to... Sorry, there we go. So we're just going to continue, pretend like I press this button here and it's gonna take you to this filter page. You can fill out, you can choose all of these options here as I've done here before. And when I hit the submit, submit bit button, it's going to give you the top three schools for as a best match. And there you go. These are the top choices that have been generated uh, from my from the database that I have created. Um, another way that you can get why is this not working? Um, another thing that I wanted to show you is once a, a person is able to sign in, I have Max information here. <laughs> I'm going to log log in as Max, and this is his profile page. Again, we can click on this filter page right here, and it will take you to the filter page. Um, the reason why I'm so um, the reason why I, I'm very proud of myself is because I actually built this entire algorithm and this is my algorithm. It's 150 lines of code with a lot of if statements. It took me, like Jordan said, more than I would expect. <laughs> I want to admit, but it took me more than a month to build this and debug it. And I, I, I spent until last minute meeting today trying to fix this. So I am very proud of myself. I appreciate you guys all being here and thank you for your time. How many schools are in your database? I have about 70. So for your algorithm, can you give us like a high level view of like what's like when it determines the top one? It's, I, don't know, I guess, how, if you give me a quick view on like how that, how that works. Yeah, so, okay, um, give me one second so I can go back into it. Okay. I should have had my database ready. Um, all right, so as you guys can see, this is my database that I took data from and copied. This is real, real life data. Um, and the, the way that I've, that I, made that uh, algorithm is based off of the selections that they have i've given them a point for each selection and that and that that selection uh, i'm sorry those points are then divided by 10 for uh, 10 because there's 10 filters on here that they can choose from um and then once they once the math is done it will populate into um into the school school top three schools list I hope I explained that well. Thank you. Coming on stage, we have Kalai followed by Patrick on deck. Woo hoo, Kalai!
Hi everyone, thank you so much for attending uh, the graduation ceremony here. Uh, so I'm going to present my capstone project. My name is Kalevani Saravanan. Um, about me, I am actually a researcher by profession. Um, I wanted to learn the bioinformatics as well as the data analysis part. So I was looking into Facebook about this. That's where this course popped up in my Facebook. So I was like, okay, let me apply. So I applied here. So because I wanted to learn Python as well as the JavaScript for my, uh, you know, PhD. So I love shopping, movies, as well as cooking. So I am a researcher by Okay, this is my contact uh, contact email, my LinkedIn, as well as my GitHub. Uh, so what motivated me to do this project? So when I was talking to Max about, you know, different capstone idea, I gave him like five different ideas, you know, what to do, Max. So, and then I wanted to use some of my personal experience. And, you know, last year when I was like, you know, due to my personal reason, I was ended up in emergency room for like two consecutive nights and like stayed there for like, you know, almost like spent my nights, two nights there. So I realized, you know, how bad the ER system is and they you know like, you know, patients waiting for like, you know, without knowing when they will be get called. So without no you know idea so i thought okay i want to do something which will be useful for public and also you know i i thought like this is adding a lot of pressure on the healthcare system as well so i wanted to find a solution which can be like interactive with the hospital as well as the patient you know we can be anywhere and we can log in into the system and we can see the er status so you know that kind of app i wanted to develop so which lead into, uh, I wanted to find this one. So where I wanted to see how can we prioritize the patients in the ER. So based on that, so I took a lot of process like, you know, uh, so I'm also, so I draw everything, each and every pages and I wanted to lay it out the way I wanted to. And then I went from there and then, you know, every time I break the code and I just text Max like, okay, Max, I need the help too. And eventually I find out that, okay, let me have like multiple copies. So every time I break one code, I can work on the other, you know, other copy. So that, that was the thing I learned eventually. Uh, time management, I, because I was a researcher, I was working nine to five. And then as soon as I come home, I ended up taking the class. So it took some time. And then, um, so as you know, as I was making the progress over the thing, I realized, oh, I want to do this, I want to do this. And you know, it, it was never ending. So, and then always small error breaks the entire code and you know, we need to fix it. So, and then I use a lot of skills I learned from here, JavaScript, React, APIs, et cetera. And so for this, my project, I use like, you know, it has like, because I have to think in like multiple user ways, like one is the hospital administration, one is this 911 and one is the patient. So I have to think it in multiple ways so that multiple users can access it. Um, so uh, I uh, like to add this, you know, this is, uh, you know, it's still app developed, still I want to make it more interactive so that computer can figure out the priority number based on, you know, patient symptoms and et cetera. So those are the things I wanted to add later on. So uh, thank you everyone. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is my page. So this is uh, this I uh, this is the page where the hospital can log in because hospital need the secure system. So I made the login page for them so that they can log in and uh, so they can access to the ER. So, you know, the hospital admin people can know how many patients are inside so they can update everything. As well as here, they can see how many patients are waiting in the waiting room, those status they can access here. And then uh, another page is going to be uh, 911 status. So they can know like what patients are with 911, how many patients and, you know, their status. So based on that, uh, the system will update the priority number. So, you know, uh, if if somebody is like, you know, just as an injury, whereas someone has a chest pain, so it will change the automatic priority number based on that, you know, uh, the, the system will update the, uh, the number. So uh, if some patient is outside, you know, if I have to go, you know, I don't have to be in the hospital. If I can see like, okay, my, 
priority number is like 30. So I can go based on my time. I don't have to go and sit in the priority uh, ER for like hours and waste my time. So that's the goal for my, uh, you know, project. And then uh, the patients, this is going to be the patient's page. The patients can... So the patients can check in their details from here and they will get the priority number here. So based on that, they can decide when they can come in as well as the 911 can have their own page. So uh, 911 have their own page. So they can decide like which hospital they can take the patients based on the waiting list. You know, they don't have to take it. Like if some hospital is little far, they can, you know, based on the waiting time, they can decide where they want to take it. As well as they can, you know, they can contact the patient and, you know, they can do everything here. So with this, uh, I should thank everyone, like particularly Max, Caitlin, uh, Jason, everyone here, everybody here. So thank you so much for giving this wonderful opportunity to present my project here. Thank you so much. Any questions? Questions, questions. Anyone? So was that real data that you were using or, you, or do you have to get hospital permission to pull that data or like? No, so, so far it's just, uh, just uh, I, I'm doing everything. So it's not really okay. totally. Any other questions? Yeah, I have uh, Patrick with Nog on deck. Hello, how's everybody doing today? Very nice to see everyone here. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm a little nervous, so um, I'm, I'm hitting up here, I'm telling you. I just bought this new shirt and it's already, it's ruined. Okay, I know I'm so embarrassed when I'm showing you that. Um, so, uh, what I did, uh, my accomplishment uh, to do this was to learn how to make websites, uh, specifically because I want to figure out how I can somehow help uh, in specific communities, specifically the Black community and specifically the LGBTQ community. Um, the main thing uh, that I wanted to be was someone kind. Uh, when I was a young, a young person, I, it wasn't working for it. Okay, there we go. Uh, when I was a young person, um, I discriminated a lot against, and it actually made me uh, have less opportunities than a lot of other people. Uh, I took that to heart, and when I got a little bit older and stuff, I started taking uh, uh, things into my own hands. Uh, what I like to do is I like to sing, I like to dance, I like to entertain. So uh, it, being in this is so different than uh, uh, being on stage and playing a character and uh, developing it that way. Instead, this is more myself, less about how you look, less about who you are, and more about uh, doing something that uh, is... Uh, more together with other people, uh, creating websites. Um, so, uh, so far, my goals with this is to uh, design websites, but also uh, figure out how I can help the community and also educate myself much more um, and how I can educate other people. Um, all right, so my main thing is uh, in, in America specifically, uh, mental health is a, is a crisis. It's something that is not taken as seriously, especially for minorities. I have here a list of um, social problems and mental uh, problems that uh, typically a lot of people have been going through. Um, uh, here I wanted to put effects of homelessness. Uh, when I was uh, about 19, I got kicked out. Uh, I didn't have anything but my car. So I ended up going to New York City because I'm like, you know, if I'm not going anywhere, then I might as well just, you know, go somewhere where I know that there is a lot of community and I can meet a lot of different people and feel accepted that way. Um, but when you really look at the homelessness specifically uh, everywhere or everywhere, uh, there is a 76% reported uh, physical abuse of those people. 30% uh, 
are emotionally abused and 17% were forced into home uh, sexual contact. Um, knowing this, we can fight the stereotype against um, what we view on television or what um, you know Fox News shows us, <laughs> which is you know people are dirty. That you know we're um, on high or sorry we're we're uh, you know we don't have our stuff together. We have too much going on. We can't like associate with other people. But um, it's it's truly changing. It's truly um, it doesn't discriminate, and anybody at any point can become homeless. Oh, and it said there, um, um, I can't believe this, but st statistically speaking, 150 million people do suffer from homelessness in America. Um, okay, so what did I want to do with this website specifically? I wanted to make sure that um, how, how this website is going to help is it's going to uh, uh, give us an, an awareness of uh, being able to, uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm so nervous. <laughs> um, it, it's going to give young people opportunities to say, hey, you know something, when I, you know something, let me say this, when I was in my car, I kept, kept saying to myself, I don't have many, like, I don't know what to do, like, what the heck am I going to do? I don't have anybody to talk to. I don't know many people in the community here in Syracuse, what am I going to do? So to create this website, I can go back to my former self and be like, oh, wow, I could just look up this website because my friend told me something or something because somebody referred it to me. And now I have all of these resources and numbers to contact so that I can help myself instead of just, you know, being, uh, you know, feeling like I am alone. Uh, and then, of course, right here, I explained, you know, uh, that there are, uh, uh, you, sorry, uh, it says here, you are who you surround yourself with. And that is so true. Oh, two minutes. Okay. All right. That's not intimidating. Okay. Um, so anyways, what's next? Uh, I want to complete this website uh, to help other people. Um, I, I put more knowledge is power because every single day I'm learning. Uh, and then I definitely need to figure out time management because working my other job with this was really, really hard. <laughs> I'm tired. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to say a big thanks to all the teachers here and all the career coaches. Thank you so much for taking your time and being so patient with me. Um, I would also like to thank the classmates because not only did I make some really nice friends, uh, but also some good connections. Like for instance, Elba, I would love to use your website to refer onto mine. Um, Brandon, I'd love to uh, refer yours as well. That would be perfect. Uh, and then of course my partner, I would like to thank you so much because it, it, it specifically with us being together and stuff, it, it's really hard to get prospering and in specific companies and stuff because of stereotypes and stuff. Thank you so much for being a part of my life and inspiring me and helping me along with the, the program. So, <laughs> and then I'll just quick show you the website and then I'm all good. All right, can you see it? It's not finished. I still gotta add some stuff, but um, so far this is the website informational. You have resources with all the numbers. There's more. Uh, mental health awareness. I started working on it before I'm gonna uh, make it look pretty. And then, um. Right now, I just have my prevention. So, and I included some people that I actually know from Vera House um, in the picture, explaining how you can, uh, if you know anybody or if yourself is going through something, how to uh, prevent harm for yourself or others. So, that's it. Thank you so much. It was so nice to be up here. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> Available and you're putting that on the resources page. Yes, yes, I do. On my resource, oops, sorry, my resources page is right here. I only have numbers. Uh, I actually wanted to get in contact with uh, some people from Vera House to put more information on there. Uh, numbers, websites, everything's going to be included so that you know, like, oh, I'm uh, I'm homeless and I don't know what to do. Oh, look, I can just call this number and I can call and see, make an appointment and see what I can do further. Uh, if there's programs or something to help house you while you're going to school or something. So. Okay. Yes. The presentation is gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, when I was younger, I used to make my own like music videos and stuff. So I kind of learned how to use uh, Movie Maker and all that uh, um, stuff. Yeah. So. <laughs> so. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Next, 
Uh, Naj? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I totally did not see you. <laughs> All right. Hi, guys. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. All right. Um, I'm Najah Leek. Uh, I did my capstone. I decided to build a photography website called Grace for Life Photography um, just to kind of showcase some of my uh, work. All right. Through my lens, I strive to capture the world's beauty one image at a time. Welcome to Graceful Eye Photography. I'm Naj, and I'm excited to show you guys what I've been working on. A little bit about me. Um, I'm a Syracuse native, born and raised in Syracuse. I went to Syracuse City School District, where I'm now an educator. I, I love teaching. I love kids. I love everything about that. Um, I love hanging with my family, my friends, um, creating memories also capturing memories, um, and the photography part. Um, so when I heard about careers in code, I was like, this is a way to learn more about tech and coding and kind of figure out how I can kind of match the two together as far as like education and coding and photography and coding and make it all come into one. A little bit more about why I chose to apply um, was to create an online portfolio, expand my career opportunities. And again, to incorporate it all in one. And here are some of my, my photographs. My inspiration um, is my family and my friends. This is my grandpa, who I recently lost. Um, and I would always take pictures of him. He hated pictures, so we, I would always make him take pictures with me and take pictures of my family. Um, so that was a big reason why I kind of pursue any and everything as family and friends. A uh, few of the problems that I had before I knew how to do any of this um, was I wanted to find a way to attract potential clients, um, connect with other photographers, exchange ideas, potentially like collaborate on project, uh, projects, um, establish a brand identity for a graceful eye, and then create a personal archive for my work. So the solution to those problems was to build a website. And All right, a little bit about their creative process in building the website. Um, Figma was a big help because it kind of helps you get your thoughts and jumbled in your head and out in front of you and helps you kind of divide and conquer everything a little bit at a time. Um, so it's just, yeah, it's pretty helpful. And then my projects are managed through GitHub projects. A few of the challenges. Um, it was challenging to learn all of these languages in a short amount of time. Um, and just learning this overall was a challenge. Uh, time management was also a thing throughout life, um, but however, <laughs> with hard work and persistence, I overcame those challenges. Um, I learned a lot about computers and technology and also myself, honestly, through the program. Um, a few things that helped me overcome these challenges were the entire Hack Upstate team. I don't wanna name drop, I don't wanna forget any names, but thank you, everybody on the Hack Upstate team. You were so helpful. The resources they gave us were helpful. The connections they helped us start were helpful. They were just overall very helpful. Another um, thing that helped me get over everything was this duck right here. <laughs> um, rubber ducking was something we learned about in the first two weeks of, of the class, and it didn't make much sense to me. But as the class went on and things got harder, it made a lot of sense. So it's just a reminder to kind of take a breather, take a step back. Don't like dwell on one problem for too long. Just take a step away and then come back and kind of give yourself a little bit of grace. So now I have rubber duckies on my desk and brought one with me today because I'm a little nervous. <laughs> so just a reminder um, to just kind of take it easy sometimes. Uh, more things I would like to do to my website, um, add additional categories, uh, upload 
photo section for other photographers to upload things that they do so everyone can see a little bit more animations and client testimonials. But you guys will see all of that. But overall, I'm eager to continue developing my website, making it more user friendly and figuring out what everybody would, would need. So a few of the skills that I learned, uh, a few of the coding languages, HTML, CSS, React, SQL, GitHub, something that we use. So I'm just gonna show you guys how I, how I use those, some of those things that I learned. And then his, this is my contact page. Ways to contact me. And now I'm gonna show you guys my website. Before I do, this is what it looks like behind the scenes. <laughs> so, and then I will show you what it looks like when it's all together. Here's my website. Um, a little carousel slider in the middle. And then, so this is just the home page. This is what you would call the front end. So if you go up here and click on the tabs, it's not necessarily like a copy and paste kind of thing. It's like sending a whole request to the database, which is Beekeeper, you guys have seen that. Um, sending a request to the database, the database and it sends it back up. So that's what you guys see on the front end. So it's not just like a copy and paste thing. It's a lot of background work to get these things up here. So it's just, a few of my photos and categories and things and have a contact form for you if you have any questions or anything like that and yeah have a few more additions to make but this is what i have so far and here's any questions any questions what were the numbers um on the different things you wanted to ask, I realized they weren't like a sequence. What was the what? The numbers for the different things you wanted to ask. It was just a layout of just a gallery. So it's just a layout. Okay. Yes. Um, I enjoy meeting people. I honestly enjoyed what I learned about myself throughout everything, which is slow down sometimes. <laughs> um, that was what I enjoyed most was the process and what it taught me aside from just coding. Next, we have Artrell with Aldo on deck. Hello, everyone. My name is Artrell and my capstone project is called Coupon Clip. So on the screen, you can see some contact information about me. I have my LinkedIn link, the email from my website, and my website URL. So a little bit about me. I am a New York City transplant. I'm also a proud dad. And before careers in code, I primarily had jobs in the customer service industry. Uh, most recently working full-time at Driver's Village. Why did I apply? I've always been interested in computer technology and I like learning. Outside of class, I like to watch sunsets and uh, take long walks on the beach. <laughs> I also try to be a decent example for my kids and uh, be a better parent. So the problem that I try to solve um, pertains to always forgetting coupons whenever I go to the supermarket. I'd always go to the checkout and they say, do you have any coupons? And I say, no, I don't. And I always wish I had a convenient way of having access to them, be it with like a cell phone or internet capable device. So to come up with the solution, it took some time. I always felt like I was reinventing the wheel. Everything I wanted to do was already done before and done pretty well. So. I tried to do something that made sense. Linking coupons to make my search fast and convenient because saving money is good. 
especially in this current economic climate. For my creative process, I prefer to handwrite my ideas on paper and then research them, um, research what I need to do from there. Challenges. There were many, many challenges. Like most of my classmates, time management was big with working full time, class, and parenting. Um, as far as the code goes, syntax, commas, periods, different characters. If they're wrong, your code is broken and things don't work. Spelling errors. You can have one thing spelled correctly in one area and correctly in another area, code is broken once again. This taught me how to read errors at the bottom of uh, VS Code, which helped me debug. Sometimes I'd have to go line by line. And um, I did have some victories, but I also had uh, a lot of struggles uh, with my CSS styling, how I want the page to look, my code breaking all the time, of course. Uh, the home page, I had a lot of issues with that, trying to take up negative space, but I'll show you what I did with that later. Imposter syndrome, so huge. There are a lot of times I felt I was gonna make it through this class, that I deserved to be in the class, but having one-on-ones with the staff definitely helped me out and gave me the confidence that I needed to make it through. So what's next? Expansion. I like to add more stores to my website, and I'll show you some that I have. Um, eventually, I'd like to add a geolocation API. So based on your physical location, you know what stores are closest to you. You can pick those stores directly. As far as surprises, this class was very, very, very intense. And our capstone projects are very intense as well. And I find myself being very indecisive on which way to go and how to design my project. So that was big, but I made it. So further ado, here's my website. So I have my nav bar, which has drop downs for different stores. I also have coupons, some that are printable, some are digital, some from Procter & Gamble. I also have a login section where you can create an account and log in as well. This middle section above my shopping cart, I had that blank for a long time. I had no idea what to do. So I came up with some cards and I decided to put different regions in that space. So if you're in the Northeast, you can click here and you can look at a table to see what stores are there. Over time, I plan on expanding this. And I built this table from scratch and it uses a database I'm very proud of. So if you wanted to go to tops, you can click on the link for store finder and you can find out what tops are closest to you. And I did the same thing for the South. So anyone traveling down South, if you wanna to go to Publix, you do the same thing. And I also have an about section, which is functional. I had a lot of help with that. Thanks to Caitlin, thank you. And um, yes, that's basically it. Um, I'm very proud of this project, a lot of work. Um, it is expandable, my data table, which I'm very happy about. So in time, hopefully I can have people add to it to make it more user friendly. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Thank you, everyone. So for the coupons, how do you get the how do you get the information for the coupons? Oh, from from the uh, the coupon website directly. I linked it in through um through the database. Oh, nice. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yeah. Um so I was just wondering, like when you log in as a user, do you get to save? Coupons or stores? That is a functionality I'd like to incorporate in the future, yes. Yeah. Well, since you forget all your visits to the house anyway, can I get your physical coupon? Say that one more time. Is it since you leave them all at the house anyway, can I get your physical coupon? Sure. <laughs> Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you.
have Alba followed by Niagara. Good evening, everybody. I'm here to present my capstone, which is called Food Sources in Syracuse, New York. It is based on food pantries in the north, south, east, and west side of Syracuse. A little bit about me. After working 17 and a half years in the rental loan and customer service industry, I thought that it was time for a career change. So um, I got referred to the EOC Center where I took certifications on Word, CompTIA, coding, cybersecurity, and Assure Fundamentals. That led me to be interested in coding, which the careers and code classes came during that time. Um, uh, that's how I became interested in this um, field. I'm currently working in the Syracuse Northeast Community Center as a digital navigator, trying to um, create a bridge in the um, technology divide. Um, teaching people that don't know about technologies, technology, like the new refugees, new immigrants, um, older people, and other people that could actually take advantage of programs like this one, but are not able to do so right now because they don't know anything about technology. Um, my email, LinkedIn, and my project um, website is right on this page right here. Um, it is live and ready to go, so anybody could actually visit it. Um, the problem that I was trying to solve is the lack of information to resources that we already have available in Syracuse, New York. Families going hungry, resources being wasted, and helping the vulnerable population get empowered through information. So if they have different choices of where they could go to get the resources that they need, it will be easier for them and they will feel less stressed and have less issues to be able to be able to feed their family and have the resources that they need. My solution was creating a website. So my website, um, like I said, is live right now. Um, it has the northeast, west, south um, side of Syracuse where you can link into those pages and it will take you to this, uh, food, some food pantries that are available in those areas. I wanted this to be simple because I'm trying to help the most vulnerable population that don't have access to technology and might not be able to research and do a lot of research to get this information. So I wanted to make it as simple as possible for everybody to be able to understand. I went through my process through a wireframe, created it through a wireframe, made sure that I understood how I wanted to look, how um, I wanted people to be able to interact with it. Then I created an HTML and CSS, which is another um, a language of code and then eventually brought it up to JavaScript and React with a database in it so it could generate the pantries for each side of the um, Syracuse. My challenges were actually finding the pantry information. There are a lot of resources here in Syracuse, New York, but even though there's a lot of resources, it is hard to get to them. It is hard to get the right information. It is hard to get the right uh, place that you need to go to and find all this information altogether. What's next? I would like to expand my database, get help from the community, get help from organizations to give me more information about new pantries and to, so I could build up my database and give um, people more options of where they could go and where they could get the services that they need. Like I said, this is my website link where um, anybody could visit it um, to be able to look at the website itself. This is my um, website right now. You could click into the north side. It will drop off some of the um, pantries that are available in the north side with the Food Bank of Central New York in the bottom. There will be a link to the flyer, the weekly flyers of the mobile pantry and the fresh food pantries for the Food Bank of Central New York so people could access those, plus um, the pantries that are available in that area that they are looking for right now. Right now I have four pantries in each site. Um, but I want that database to actually expand and be able to put as many resources in there so people could actually go and get the services that they need.
I also have a new pantry request form. So if somebody wants to request a pantry for me to put into my database, all they have to do is fill out the form. This form will then be sent to me, um, to my admin page, and then I could approve that pantry and put it into the website itself so people could have the resources that they need. I believe that here in Syracuse, New York, it is not a lack of resource, it's a lack of information on how to get to those resources and how to attain them. Um, I worked with a 62 year old recently, just a couple of days ago, where he called to a pantry while I was in that pantry trying to get that information, where he had gone three days without food because he had an EBT card, he had money in his EBT card, but he couldn't order food. He couldn't go to the store. He had no transportation. He, he wasn't able to mobilize himself. He needed an extra credit card to be able to even order food with his EBT card. So he wasn't able to access that um, even food for himself, even though the, he had the resources. So um, I dropped off some food to him and then I got him in touch with some of the resources that he could use to be able to get that information to them. So if we could get this information to the most vulnerable population, it would actually make them a lot better, be able to um, better themselves and maybe go into a program like this so we could start getting more people into it. Thank you for your attention. Have a nice day. Any questions? I said a question, but I, I do want to make a statement about Alba. Alba was ahead of the pack. Okay, she stayed on top of her project. She was way ahead of everybody else. She every time we learned something, I know for a fact she incorporated it into her project right away because you could see it the next month before we had <laughs> capstone check in. Her site was done. So I just want to say, great job. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Hi everyone, my name is Niasia Graves. Um, my capstone is about something that I'm passionate about, which is food. Um, the name of my capstone is Abacho Ricchette, and it stands for a chef's kiss. Um, about me, I've worked with children my whole life. Um, my hobbies include dancing and cooking. This is a picture right here of my dance. Um, I'm a dance leader over at the church of the Praise Dancers. Um, this course took a lot of hard work and dedication, but it was very rewarding. Um, this is just a picture of all of the people that inspired me. This is me and my grandfather. Um, I cook with him a lot. This is me and my dad. I cook with him a lot. This is my mom and my family. And this is some things that I've cooked. Um, this is my contact info. And then the issues. Okay. So one thing I noticed when I was going to look up recipes is I had to go to multiple websites. I felt like doing all the research and cross-referencing different websites take up a lot of your time and take away from the joys of cooking. So my solution was that I came up with the idea to make a website where everyone can search and upload recipes on one website. <clears throat> And so the name of my project came from watching a lot of like different culture cooking videos, especially like the Italian culture and falling in love with the way they cook. And also my great grandma used to cook a lot of Italian food. I used a lot of wireframes for my creative process and my little chalkboard over here. Some of my biggest challenges was building my backend database, um, figuring out how I wanted my website to look getting my images to show up in the certain order that I wanted it to, um, grasping technical concepts, focusing too much on the design, time management and social anxiety. It took, up, took a lot for me to be up here. Um, solutions were taking my time, asking for help, doing a lot of research and watching a lot of the videos over and over again. And what's next? Um, I want to work on making this a website that people will actually use and love. 
um, I'm going to be applying for more jobs and internships and taking classes to further my knowledge in tech. Okay, and then I'm going to show you guys my website. Mm -hmm. And this is the login page. You can create a new account. You can, create, you can just go on the guest account without logging in. But when you log in, these are the top recipes of the month. And then you can upload a recipe. You can look at different food categories. You can look at appetizers if that's what you're looking for, breakfast, brunch, lunch, dinner. Um, you can search up different things. And this is the upload recipe form. And this is the new account form. And when you go to the guest account, it's just the top recipes again. And that's my caption. Question. What's your favorite recipe that you made there? Um, probably the picture I put up the lamb chops, the honey glazed lamb chops. Oh, okay. How do you determine all the top recipes of the month? Um, I just put that there. Like, hopefully, one day I could do like the database and like, um, so basically, it would be what everybody clicked on the most. Okay. And then, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Next up, we have Brian. Uh, all right, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, my name is Brian Hill. I am a now graduate of Careers in Code Cohort 4. Um, and my capstone name is Check Ball. Uh, here's my contact info if anybody would like to get in touch with me. All right, a little about myself. Um, technology has always been interesting to me, uh, but like many, I thought you had to be a certain kind of smart uh, to excel. So I avoided in college. As an adult with a bit more confidence, uh, I took lots of self-paced courses and free resources, which helped a lot, but I was never able to reach full stack capabilities. Um, I'm happy to say that's no longer the case. Uh, beyond that, I love my family, I love fitness, uh, being in nature. I try to put that into my work and my studies. All right, so the problem I looked to solve was recreational sports. Um, as many know, recreational sports are great for a number of reasons, uh, community, personal health, uh, mental cognition, just to name a few, but the relaxed vibes that make it more fun can also make it harder to coordinate. Um, and that's with people you already know. As someone who has moved throughout my life, I have found that recreational sports are also a great way to meet new people. That said, it can be difficult to know the where's and the when's in a new place or even any details about the meeting. Um, there are apps that help to arrange meetings in general, but an app focused specifically on recreational sporting meetups is something I personally would be more likely to use. All right. uh, my solution uh, relates back to my previous point. Um, I prefer apps that are very simple to use um, and very simple to navigate. I wanted the main features of the app, which were reading, posting, and deleting games, uh, to be as seamless as possible. And I wanted the functionality to be focused on recreational sports. With the combination of React for the front end, Node.js for the server, um, as well as Postgres and Amazon Web Services for the database, I was able to accomplish that goal. Uh, my creative process was a journey. Um, it began with a wireframe, as you see on the bottom right of the page. Um, and that vision ultimately ended up with my current version, which you'll see in a bit. Uh, above that is my entity relationship diagram, which is basically a, a technical way of saying how the database will be structured. Um, I also included an image of the Coolers homepage. Uh, on the bottom left to reference all of the online design resources I use as inspiration. They were very helpful. Um, and getting, just to get me across the goal, creativity was not something that uh, came easy to me. Uh, finally, I condensed that all into the MVP, um, which is the minimum viable product. Um, and as my skills in the class progressed, I incorporated them into that MVP. 
right? Uh, when they say full stack, they really mean a stack. So once I learned a particular part of the stack, it's then another thing to learn how that interacts with other parts of the stack. Also found that while simple looks nice, it often leads to increased complication due to more reasons than I even have time for it. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I struggled with the design choices like color and font, but once I started to utilize online resources, as well as seeing my classmates projects, I was able to get over that. Um, specifically, the filter features on my app were a challenge, especially before using the database. But uh, thanks to concepts like dry, which is don't repeat yourself, um, I was able to reduce the lines and generally make the code easier to read. Um, I also made my search filters into a component and I imported it into the homepage so that my code was more organized. React made that very easy. All right, so what is next for me is uh, hopefully a career in code. Uh, simultaneously, I definitely plan to keep improving on Checkball and adding features that allow users to interact more with the posted games. Uh, this class has given me the confidence to pursue this even further and hopefully become an expert in web development. Um, finally, my ultimate goal is to keep making more personal projects and eventually make products that others can use for their business. Here is the application, right? is it all showing? All right, so we're starting with the, the home page. Um, this is the best home page ever. <laughs> all right, once we log in, we are now on the home page. Um, so the top left, you have the filter section and that's for filtering games. Uh, the bottom left is the post section, and that's for posting games. Um, and on the right is where all the games from the database will show. All right, moving to the filter section. As the name implies, if you change the sport or the location, the games will be filtered based on the selection. So basketball, those should be just the basketball games, filtered to the, the surface. See just the games with turf. To the post section, uh, it's very similar. If you post a game, down here I have it pre-filled. So it's a kickball game, outdoor for Monday, um, set to Comstock Park, kickball in the afternoon, on a Monday afternoon. Scroll down to the bottom, that game is now updated on the page. All right, for the games themselves, uh, as you can see, the details that were posted with the game show with the game, and that is all pulled dynamically from the database. Um, if you would like to see more details about the game, you can click that and it will take you to more details on the game. Um, and finally, if you would like to delete a game, delete that game and I'll update as well. Uh, again, so that is the app. It's very simple in function and appearance, but surprisingly difficult to implement. Um, it works just how I wanted it to, so it was worth it. Um, that said, that is my capstone. I thank you all for coming. Thank you so much to Aries 21, Hack Upstate. Project X site and Max, you're the goat. Any questions for Brian? Oh, what's up? Uh, to delete, the, is it just the person who created the event can delete it, or is it that? So, so right now, that's kind of like the beta version. Pretty much anybody who can log in can delete it, but since it's basically the administrator user. Yes, but I do plan to implement a function that would make it so that only the user that created the game can do it. Yes. Use your password. Yeah, do we have the um, size? Yeah. Um, so uh, next up on the stage, we'd like to welcome Taylor. Taylor is uh, assistant director of the ERI 21 program, and we would like to invite her to say a couple words. Afterwards, we'll have our graduation ceremony. Thank you, Max. Uh, first off, wow. <laughs> like. Can you just give yourselves a round of applause? Well, I'm, I'm always so impressed because I think especially being, you know, being adult learners, right? There's a lot of determination and grit. You have competing priorities, right? And to show up 
you know, night after night, um, you really have to push yourselves and to even just watching and listening tonight too, like really stepping out of your comfort zones. Something I was reflecting on um, when many of you were, were speaking was just, you had me thinking about, um, that's not about the destination, right? But it's about the journey and your journeys are really beautiful. So thank you for sharing that with us this evening. Uh, congratulations on behalf of the entire Erie 21 team, Hack Up State team, incredible partners and just always so amazed at all the work you do. So thank you. And that's it. I know there's cake to be had, uh, but again, congratulations. And, and thank you for sharing this with us. It's been amazing to watch all of you transform into software developers over these past 24 weeks. You've all had to make some tremendous sacrifices for the program, training in hours both inside and outside the classroom. You all inspire me, and we've learned so much from all of you. Thank you for all of your hard work, dedication to the program. We're so incredibly proud of how far you've come, and can't wait to see where this program takes you. Don't forget about us. Congratulations. Congratulations, cohort four. You put up with me. I mean, you made it to the end of the school in six months in camp and are now ready to use your momentum to jumpstart your career. It has been a pleasure getting to know each and every one of you. And remember, we are here for you. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the Syracuse Technical Proud of you. Fantastic work. Well wishes that you dream of home, you face yourself on cold futures, and you at your own special place in the cold evening. Hey, Core Board, congratulations on your upcoming graduation. As your career coach, I couldn't be more proud of you and more excited to see where you take your next step. Please remember that we are always here for you and we are cheering for you over here in the Great Rico Corner. So, best of luck to your future. Congratulations, Core Board, for great work completing the program. Uh, I know how much work we put in, and I'm so proud of y'all for finishing. I look forward to seeing you in the future. Congratulations. Proud of all of you and how far you've come, all the work that you put in, and I'm excited to see what you do next. I hope you're ready to get to work alongside all of you. Best wishes and reach out to everybody. Again, congratulations. Hey, students, you made it to the end of 24 weeks. I personally know how difficult this can be and just how much you have to sacrifice to get here. Um, we are so proud of you, and I cannot wait to see you in all the future. Congratulations, cohort four. You've made it through the 24 week gauntlet of coding and you've come out the other side as full stack development. Folks, congratulations on graduating careers in code. I really enjoyed watching you all progress from the curriculum to build some really cool stuff along the way. I look forward to seeing that over the dozen post graduation and we'll see you at a meetup coming soon. Thanks. Congratulations. You've reached the end of the roller coaster ride. You should all be very proud of yourself for what you've accomplished over the past 24 weeks. I really look forward to seeing where you go next. Again, congratulations. Sorry. <laughs> All right, you want to stop? Yeah, so I'm going to ask for the Hack Up State staff to come up on stage. We're going to kick off our graduation ceremony. You've got uh, students can come up on this side of the screen. Uh, you can shake hands or fist bump or elbow touch or whatever you're comfortable with. Um, and then uh, go ahead back to your seats. Uh, at the end of the event, we'll call everyone back up and we'll get a couple pictures with your uh, certificates as a, as a group. All of that said, uh, let me <laughs> take the whole podium with me. Uh, well, I want to call to the stage uh, first Schneider. Thank 
<laughs> Next up, uh, we have Jordan. <laughs> Next up, we have Jennifer. <laughs> Next up, we have Brandon. <laughs> Watch your step on the way down, by the way, students. Uh, next up, we have Exona. <laughs> next up to the stage, we have Pilate. <laughs> Next up to the stage, we have Patrick. Next up, we have Naj. Uh, next up, we have our friend. Uh, next up, we have Alba. Uh, next up, we have Niasia. Uh, last but not least, we have Brian. <laughs> that uh, concludes our ceremony. Thank you guys all so much for coming. I'm going to ask all the students to come up right up to this area so we can get a group picture with everyone. Please help yourself to food and, and whatever's back there. There's a drink table back there. Thank you all so much for coming. Max, yeah. I'm going to turn off the projector so you don't have to. Yeah. 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 I'm going to get the cruising phone one too. Are we, are we?
Yes. Oh, okay. Student committee, come up, bring your certificate with you for the group photo. That's great. Right. Great. Is it awkwardly trying to get over? Yeah, not like I'm here. I don't know what to do. Take food home if you like. There's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Hey, happy smiles, everybody. Bigger, happier smiles. <laughs> Actually, I'm good. 